Uh, welcome to TL Physics and good evening and today I am going to focus on the derivation of the diffraction grating formulae. Now the derivation of this is on the AQA syllabus. Young's double slits isn't but they are related and in a previous video I went through the derivation of Young's double slit. What I'm going to do today though is I'm going to talk about the diffraction grating and derive the formula. So the diffraction grating is kind of like a mesh wire but on a very small scale. When laser light or light goes through it, it starts to diffract and these diffracted waves from each of the individual holes will interfere with each other. And of course, as we've done before, how they interfere, is it in phase, is it constructively, or is it out of phase or anti-phase, is it destructively, will of course affect a pattern on the wall. Now, I've got a diagram of sort of a zoomed in part of the diffraction grating itself. And I've got these two very small slits here. Okay. Now this letter is D. This is the slit separation between one slit and another. In Young's double slit, um, this value was S. And it's very important to remember, you can only use this formula for, um, you can only use this formula for diffraction gratings and you can only use the Young's double slit formula for Young's double slit. And what this is about is here's the central maxima. So this is the bright bit. This is the bit where the light from this gap and this gap travel the same amount of distance and arrive perfectly in phase. And this is the central maxima. What I'm interested in is actually the first maxima the time when the waves meet and they are one whole wavelength out of phase. Now, this here, this black triangle here, so from the center to the central maximum, central maximum to the first maximum makes a nice triangle. In Young's double slit, we were actually interested in this and we said this was D and this was D-ish. But, the problem is, is these angles that we're going to be dealing with are going to be much bigger. So we can't make that approximation, which is why it's important we can only do this formula as it is. So this is the angle from the central maxima all the way up to the first maxima up here. So this is the angle this makes. And much like with Young's double slit, this blue line travels here. And this red line to the first maxima will travel one wavelength further. So if I was to draw a line here that made this as isosceles triangles, or triangles, sorry, this extra added distance is one wavelength. And much like before with Young's double slit, we actually say that this triangle here is similar to this triangle here. So this angle and this angle are in fact the same. And if we zoom in on this, I've got D here, theta here, or lambda there, and theta here. So sine theta equals lambda over D so d sine theta equals lambda. Now this is for the first maxima. At the second maxima, this distance would be 2 lambda. The third, it would be 3, etc, etc. Which leads us to an approximation that d sine theta theta equals n lambda. And that is the formula that's on your data sheet. Now, this d, this distance between the two lines is given in a multitude of ways. They like saying that there are 300 lines per millimeter. That's how they would like to give you your slit separation. They'll say there's 300 lines per millimetre. 
you need to get that into a distance. And how you do that is you go 1 times 10 to the minus 3, so that's 1 millimetre in metres, divided by 300. And this, I'm just going to grab a calculator, would equal 1 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 300. to the minus six meters. This tells me that this gap, the distance between one gap and another gap is 3.3 .3 recurring times 10 to the minus six meters. If I wanted to use this information in the formula, I'd do this. So let's say my laser has a wavelength of 490 nanometers. And D is what we just worked out there, is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 6. I want to know the angle for my, let's say, second maxima. So, D sine theta equals N lambda. So... 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 6 sine theta equals 2 times 490 times 10 to the minus 9. Sine theta equals, just going to grab a calculator, 2 times 490 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 3.3 3 times 10 to the minus 6. So 2 times 490 e to the minus 9 divided by 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 6 equals 0.0297. Whoops. Do apologise. I've actually got that slightly incorrect, so I'm just going to rearrange that. So 2 times 490 times 10 to the minus 9, divided by 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 6. That's better. I get 0 0.297. I accidentally put 33 times 10 to the minus 6. To undo a sine, you use inverse sine. So theta equals sine to the minus 1, 0 0.297. And that equals 17.3 degrees. It is important that your calculator is in degrees for these questions. So please make a double check. If you get a number that looks a bit weird, just check if it is in radians or degrees. The last part of diffraction gratings that may or may not appear in exams is the maximum order you would see. So if you think about it, if I was shining it on my wall, I would have first, second, third, fourth, and eventually it won't be on my wall anymore, it'll be on the ceiling. And we work out the maximum by using the idea of sine 90, because anything bigger than 90 degrees, it's going to be on the ceiling. So, if I use the formula D sine theta equals n lambda. Again, I'm going to use the one that I had earlier, 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 6, sine 90 now, equals, I don't know what n is, we're going to find that out, times, we'll have the same wave as before, so 490 times 10 to the minus 9, n equals 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 6, times by sine 90, all divided by 490 times 10 to the minus 9. And that gives me a number of 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 6, times by sine 90, for those of the key you would have worked out that would have been 1, divided by 490 times 10 to the minus 9, and that would have given me a value of 6.73.
Now, this is important. You can't have 0.73 of a bright bit. You haven't seen 7 either. You can't round it up. N equals 6. You cannot have 6.0, because that implies it could be something else. N equals 6. Diffraction gratings come, are very important when we start talking about, again, electron diffraction or looking at atomic sizes in the second year. The thing you need to remember is this formula can only be used for diffraction gratings. If you want to go back onto Young's modulus, you can go back to another video and see how I derive Young's modulus, but it's very, not Young's modulus, Young's double slit, I do apologise. But this is the derivation you need to know how to get this formula from this diagram.